The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM Tuesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. All the equities in positive territory indices, I should say. S&P up 15 points right now, trading at 44.93. You look where we are. We're about 1% away from all-time highs. Quite a rally we have had. NASDAQ 100 up 37 points right now, 15,328. You get the Dow up 125 points right now, 35,257. And the Russell, positive by 10. Bitcoin could be a big day for Bitcoin. We may get the first official Bitcoin ETF today. Bitcoin holding up relatively well. We're talking about 62,655. You take a look at the daily on Bitcoin, you're talking about all-time highs within about 3,000, basically sitting at all-time highs. You see where we chopped around? Ironic, that's the day that they pushed out Coinbase. It'll be interesting to see how we react with Bitcoin literally touching all-time highs as we have an ETF come to market. Now, we're gonna talk about Bitcoin a little bit uh, to start off the program. You look at where Bitcoin has been, folks. You back things up in terms of futures, right? We're talking about futures go live December of 2017. Now, Bitcoin has charts that go back further than that. Maybe I'll pull up one of the online exchanges to get a chart prior to 2017. But if you're talking about futures, that's when the chart originates. Bitcoin was parabolic into the run up to that price point. Right now, it looks like that's actually uh, a very tiny price on this Bitcoin chart because of the rally we've had in the last year or so. Bitcoin, for the first time when they went regulated futures, you traded from 20,000 down to 3,000 over the course of the next year. Uh, I half chuckle because it almost seemed too easy, folks. At the first time, you could short Bitcoin in a regulated environment, and man, did they ever quite a trade. But since then, Bitcoin, and look at this acceleration. You just traded. Now, this is a monthly for the month of October. It's only October 19th. We're up $20,000 from a low of $43,000. We're at $63,000. Be careful here as we come into um, basically all-time highs with Bitcoin going to an ETF. We'll talk about some of the other facets of an ETF, how it might differ from some of the other commodity ETFs, which are based off futures prices as well. Speaking of commodities, we jumped to crude. There's a monthly. That's a little bit of craziness. We'll see if we get up to 100, where we chopped around in crude for the better part of almost four years. Think about that, right? From 2011, basically, the beginning of 2011, to the middle of 2014, you had Bitcoin jumping from anywhere between about 80 and almost $115 before it sold off uh, on 2014. 14 yes 2014 is when it sold off we're now basically above any prices we've seen going back in crude to the late part of 2014 now you take a look at the 15 minute for some action crude makes a high of 83.18 yesterday we were just almost at those price levels we're sitting right now up 33 cents at 82 dollars gold catching a little bit of a bid talk about some volatility recently on gold up to 1801 last week we start off this week at around 1770 this morning we're up almost 20 dollars at 1785 in gold silver's up almost 90 cents look at that run in silver from 2320 overnight we're trading at 2415 right now and we jump to notes and bonds we pulled back towards the end of last week we hit a low of 130.14 remarkable when you look at the move i talked about it on my program yesterday and interesting that we made lows almost right around my program yesterday but you're talking about a move of a full point and five ticks we trade lower that's indicating higher yield lower price higher yield this morning down two ticks 130.22 on that 10 year we jump over to the volatility index so much for volatility premiums we're sitting right near 16 at 1616. Uh, historical mean, historical average for the VIX, volatility index, 16. We're right at that historical average. You take a look at the daily, quite a drop off on volatility. We persisted above a price of about 18 for a while on that volatility index. Got a spike high at 2879 in September, but the markets have almost gotten it all back. Just for some context here, taking a look at the S&Ps, I mean, look at this. 45.49 is the all-time high in the futures. We're trading at 44.92 right now. You're up. I mean, what was the low we had here going back to the beginning of October? It was all a September collapse. Look at that. From September 3rd 
we had an all-time high. October 1st, the run begins from lower prices. You're talking about 4260. We have gained 230. 230 S and P points in October alone, clawing back almost all of the September losses. Now you take a look at the Nasdaq 100. Again, you know, a little bit further from all-time highs compared to the S&P. S&P sitting almost 1%. You're about, what is that, 400, 375 points, maybe just over 2% from all-time highs in the NASDAQ. The Dow within about 1% as well. You're talking about 35,547. We're trading right now 35,253. I'm not sure anybody imagined that the, now the Russell, why not finish it out? A little bit of a different story. This consolidation in the Russell stretches back to February of this year, we've been chopping around between about 2100 and 2366 is the high. We're trading at 2274. So you still have a little ways to go to all time highs on the Russell. But man, we're within a stone's throw. The Dow, we could hit that today. We're only, what's that, 300, less than 300 points away from all time highs, which is nothing now in the Dow when it's trading at 35,000. NASDAQ 100, the furthest from the all time highs, 15,323. So you're talking about just above 2%, and SP is about 1%. Remarkable. All right, let's get back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin on a daily. There's the volatility that you've had, 62,695. Let's pull up some of the headlines. Uh, before we do, one, fa one economic indicator this morning, housing starts fell last month, led by multifamily slowdown. So this was out at 8.30. You have housing starts, residential starts fell 1.6% last month to 1.56 million annualized rate. The market was looking for 1.62 million. So a little bit off that number. Applications to build a proxy for future construction fell 7.7% to an annualized number as 1.59 million units in September. That's the largest monthly decline since February. Uh, cheap borrowing costs and a pandemic-fueled migration to the suburbs supported housing demand and construction through late last year and early this year. But high material costs, unpredictable supply, sup unpredictable supply chain delays, and labor shortages, I imagine this one is having a huge impact on housing. Uh, maybe my dad can talk a little bit about that um, this evening on his program coming up at 3 o'clock. He deals with it when he's building. He tells me about it. Um, single family starts were unchanged at an annualized 1.08 million as multifamily starts, which tend to be volatile and include apartment buildings and condos, decreased 5%. So quite a number there out at 830 on that real estate market. All right, now we go to Bitcoin. Bitcoin pushes toward record before debut of futures-based ETF. So ProShares poised to launch their ETF today. Uh, now they get into a couple times. We're gonna come into the break in about a minute here. So we'll talk about this a little bit more. We're gonna be talking to Kevin Hanks coming up in the next segment. It's earnings season. We got Netflix earnings tonight, folks. We got a lot to talk about, Netflix. Uh, we already have some earnings out this morning, but Netflix, we jump over to the Analyze tab, October 19th, talking about almost a 5% move priced into Netflix earnings. Quite a run this has had from 500 and change up to 637. Always interesting when you have an equity pushing all-time highs as they come into an earnings event. That's what's going to happen tonight. We'll see if they live up to the valuation. I think it's about $19 billion in market capitalization they've gained just from August. Now, you check tech take a look at the fundamentals of this company under the fundamentals analyze tab on the thinkorswim platform yeah they're a 282 billion dollar company at this price point how many shares they got 442 million quite a run stay tuned folks when we come back talking to our man kevin hinks from td ameritrade network fast market we'll be right back Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&P right now up about 17 points with 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. You're trading at 44.94 within about 55 points of all-time highs. NASDAQ 100 up 17 points right now. Excuse me, NASDAQ 100 up 40 points right now. 15,330 in the Dow up 137. With that in mind, folks, do we have our man Kevin Hinks on the line? Yes, we do. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market, folks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They walk you through the fast market, talking about hypothetical trade setups. Man, it's a perfect time of year as we're coming into earnings season. We got a couple big dogs this week. We got a big dog with Netflix tonight, and we got markets trading higher in October. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, Netflix will lead us off today on Fast Market, Tommy. We'll look at Netflix, everything they have going on, the unbelievable run. Because, Tommy, it's one thing. It's pretty much assumed that Netflix is going to have a good earnings report, but the stocks run an incredible amount of weight. How do you trade it, right? I mean, because you see sometimes when stocks have good run into earnings, no matter what they put out, uh, the street is disappointed. So, We'll have to see how that trades, but then we're also going to look at United Airlines, and then we're going to look at LAM Research. Now, LAM Research has earnings tomorrow, but because the lineup starts piling up, we need to go ahead a little bit and get some of these good names off the board early. So Netflix, United Airlines, and LAM Research today, Tom. Got to love it, man. Uh, three stocks, Netflix kicking things off. And as you say, Kevin, I got Netflix up on the Thinkorswim platform here on a daily basis. We were trading August 12th. So what's that? Barely more than two months ago at a price of 507. You trade a 637. I jump over to the Analyze tab and they got almost 500 million shares. Uh, quite an appreciation of market capitalization over that period of time. As you say, they'll have to live up to those expectations, and you're almost pushing all-time highs. Always interesting when you have an equity trading. I mean, we made all-time highs a couple weeks ago at 646 uh, in Netflix. We're trading at 637, and uh, I, I was watching Fast Market, Kevin. I know you have not watched uh, Squid Game yet. You're one of the few, but they've I had quite a, quite, a, quite a run recently into their earnings yep. event. Uh, jumping back to but the I market still, real Tony, quick. But I still yes. understand what Squid Game represents, right? Go Just ahead. Because it's I don't for personally those that watch hear that you show, talk I understand that it means international growth, and that's where Netflix still has a lot of room to grow. It's pretty fascinating. I was talking about even the people in my house, um, how you have 
a piece of content like that, it's already paid off immensely, and they're going to have that content forever. So it's amazing as they start to build that library, like you talk about going out internationally, um, these shows, the content library they're building, it's pretty cool. Uh, S&Ps, Kevin, right? So we're in October. It's only October 19th. So much for the pullback of September here. September, we've talked about it many times. You brought it up in terms of the jobs number that happened September 3rd for August numbers. Market pulls back. We've almost gotten it all back, Kevin. I said it's remarkable. I don't think many people, when the market, I have an October 1st daily bar in the S&P at 42.60, said, you know what? By, by October 20th, we might be hitting all-time highs in the S&P the Dow and even NASDAQ 100s right now, it's just uh, about 2% away from those highs as we come into earnings. What do you think of the resilience of this market, man, in the first 20 days of October? I mean, September was a pretty interesting month in terms of the choppiness and overall negative sentiment around the market as people started to ratchet down their earnings expectations. Well, now earnings are coming out, and that lower bar that, that was set is getting beat pretty handily. And the market is turning back to the upside and realizing that this economy is still doing extremely well, even with some of the problems with labor force and logistics and things like that. So the overall economy is still doing pretty well. Third quarter earnings coming in with nice beats. Some of the stocks are, are, are firing higher. Some of them have run into the earnings event. That's a little dicier. But certainly this is a great tradable event. And you know, earnings and the economic data that we're getting a little light this week um, in terms of top tier economic data. But certainly a lot of market moving events, Tommy, there's plenty for us to chew on during this week. Yeah, I'd say so, man. And how about um, how about where yields are, Kevin? Because it's interesting that we've seen over that time, right? You got the 10 year. We're sitting at one point six one percent now. Um and you have the markets able to trade higher as we have the yield now above 1.6%. What's your take on, I'm asking you all the big questions, man. Tell me about yields. But what's your take on how yields have moved here? You know, we're above 1.6%, but the market, as you say, um, focused on earnings. Things going better than they thought, at least to kick things off. And the market sentiment pretty strong with a yield now above 1.6% on the tenure. Yeah, yields are going higher because the overall economy looks healthy. And that is a natural progression of interest rates higher and with tapering coming sometime in the future you know i think what tommy is this market gets uncomfortable with yields higher and then it over time it gets more and more comfortable and i think that's what you're seeing people when the when it moved from one one and one two to one six that was unsettling but over time people get more and more comfortable with a 10-year up here and so now, what does that do, though, for foreign buyers? And what happens when we get up to 1.6? That's been the problem in the past. So, yeah, I think this the, the short story, people were uncomfortable with move to 1.6, and now they're getting more comfortable, Tommy. It's so cool, man. So as you're saying that, right, I'm taking a look at the 10-year on the Thinkorswim platform as I jump around. Come on. Where, where am I? There I am. Uh, and you have, I go back, Kevin, like you're talking about, when you're at 1.6%, the first big run when we got to 1.6 pretty quickly, whether it was uh, April kind of of this year, as you have the price of the 10-year dropping dramatically, we rise. And as you're talking about, everyone's like, whoa, what's up with rising yields, right? Well, then I pull up the S&P futures contract, and you were trading at the S&Ps at 3,700 and change when we were at 1.6%. Market digested, and we're pushing 4,500 as we come into that number uh, only about six months later in the year. Pretty remarkable. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the show, as always, coming up at noon. We look forward to the education. We look forward to those hypothetical trades, man, as we come into the most wonderful time of the year, earnings season. We appreciate the conversation, as always, Kevin. We'll be watching at 12 noon today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, Kevin. You as well. Folks, tune in. It's a great time of year, as I say. The hypothetical trade setups, if you want to learn options, if you want to learn some of the more complex issues that they talk about, setting up hypothetical trades, multi-leg option trades, it's the best time of the year to do it. They have endless amounts of stocks coming out with earnings. You heard them. They're talking about whether it's Netflix, United, Lamb Research. I've talked about Netflix. They're the big dog after the bell tonight. 637 bucks for trading that. Now, I mentioned you got 500 million shares on this equity, okay? So you're talking about, I mean, just to, to put it in zeros, all right? Because sometimes it's hard to imagine the simple math that goes on. 
There's 500 million shares times the $130 that this equity has risen, and I'm talking about from 507 to 637. That is $65 billion in market capitalization that Netflix has added, and it's only a $280 billion market cap right now <laughs> since the last two and a half months, okay? Since the last earnings event, they have added $65 billion in market cap, and that's at a time when percentage-wise on their market cap, it's a much bigger number than something like Am um, Amazon or Apple adding $65 billion. Now, the number that you hear thrown around, I believe, was how much it's added in market cap since probably Squid Game came on. Maybe that was October 4th or October 1st. Excuse me. Maybe a little bit further back, actually. Maybe this was the run late September. Uh, still a remarkable number. They'll be out with their numbers after the bell. And we're talking about a $31 expected move. We'll check out how that opens today. Uh, we'll be right back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got all the markets in the green right now with the S&Ps up by 16, NASDAQ 100 up by 38, the Dow up 112 and the Russell right now positive by eight. Jumping back to Bitcoin on the day that we may get the first Bitcoin ETF, Bitcoin pushing 63,000, 63, excuse me, 62,810 right now, up more than 1,100 bucks on the session. Let's jump over to Ethereum. The other one I like to take a look at up above 1.5 percent. Ethereum almost pushed 4,000 yesterday. We had a high of 4406 back in May. Uh, I believe that correlates to right around when Coinbase went public, although not. Was it May 12th? Let's check out. 
Is that the ex exact day? No, it was April 14th. So it looks like Ethereum actually peaked a month later following uh, Bitcoin's peak on the Coinbase IPO. Ethereum hits 44.06. Right now we're trading at 38.32. Uh, with all the markets in the green and that symbol is going to be BITO not sure it's trading yet looks like it's got a price tag of 40 not sure if that's arbitrary right now but ProShares pushing out their ETF to the public today I think the fee is going to be around 0.95 percent now this is going to be predicated off of the futures contract okay it is not predicated off them holding physical Bitcoin it is off of the closing price of the futures contract in Bitcoin, which is the one we're always taking a look at on the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, on my platform, it's uh, BTC slash BTC is the symbol for Bitcoin slash ETH is Ethereum. Bitcoin futures, that is what the contract will be trading off. Now, jumping back to as we jump through some of the articles that I have up here. Uh, record before debut of futures-based ETF, okay, ProShares Pro is launching that ETF today. Largest virtual currencies in sight of scaling the April record. Really amusing how it comes in right at that high. Talk about a dicey scenario. We know what happened the last time we were at that high. It correlated to pushing paper out to the public. Now, this is a little different. They're not necessarily pushing paper out to the public, right? They have an exchange-traded fund with a fee built in that is predicated off of the futures. Now, one of the things that they're talking about, okay, now this is Dave Wilson out there at Bloomberg, talking about U.S. oil fund shows the challenge facing Bitcoin futures ETFs. Now, what he has up here, the U.S. oil fund went public in 2006. It traded for the first time. It was launched in 2006. The chart up here, the black is the U.S. oil fund. The red is the price of the futures contract. Now, what it shows here is that over time, the ETF that's predicated off the futures contract because of a number of factors, and we'll get into more of them because the U.S. oil fund contributed to the negative closing price of the, was it the May or the March futures contract last year that spiked to a negative $38, something like that. Now, if you look at those funds, if you bought in 2006 and held, you would be down 90% Monday's close was about 90% lower than the first day price in April of 26, 2006 versus if you had held the price of oil itself in futures. Now, this is where it gets weird because you were down uh, 150%. Not sure how that happens. 100% is usually the maximum you can lose. Not in futures trading, as we found out last year in oil. Uh, but you see, with the rebound there, you're up 20% right now in the futures contract versus being down 90% holding the fund. Bitcoin, a little bit of a different story. The new ProShares BT Bitcoin ETF has a unique set of risks, okay? Same characteristics as commodities fund, meaning investors need to understand contango and backwardation because you're trading futures contracts, folks, okay? You're not trading where they're going to be holding the physical item itself. They're going to be holding futures contracts, and that's where things got really haywire with the oil fund. Not sure it's going to be the case here with Bitcoin since it's actually not something that is predicated upon delivery in terms of physical delivery, right? The problem with oil was who, who was able to take, I think they have it down here, um, 42,000 barrels of oil. Yeah, there's so many articles here. The one thing I did want to touch on from this article, article though, is the Winklevoss twins. Now, I'm sure that they are doing just fine. Number one, they got their Facebook money. Uh, whether they deserve that or not for Zuckerberg starting that company at the time that he was supposed to be working for them on a, on a little bit of a similar project. You could say something like that. Nonetheless, they should have plenty of Bitcoin from the early days. They wanted, though, to have a Bitcoin ETF as far back as 2013 when Bitcoin was trading below $1,000. And they were going to back it with physical Bitcoin. That was actually the problem. Now, futures weren't even a thing until four years later. All right. But imagine, and, and this is what it says here. This is an opinion piece from Bloomberg, okay? Opinion piece for disclosure. But it is interesting that if their fund had been approved, it would now likely be the largest, most liquid ETF in existence and would have provided supercharged returns for a whole generation of investors. They're pointing to a regulatory failure in terms of waiting until this thing is at 62000 to push it out. Uh, the last SEC chairman, though, he was not interested because of the possible manipulation in terms of Bitcoin prices because it's in an unregulated environment. 
What this current SEC chairman said is that, guess what? If it's predicated on futures contracts, that's something that might actually be something very difficult to manipulate. So that's why you got a flood of Bitcoin ETFs that are going to be trying to get approved, predicated off of the futures contract. Um, and look at this. We're rising. Of course we're rising. Who said we're not rising? 64,590, folks. Are we trading yet on Bitto? Oh, we're trading, folks. We're trading on Bitcoin, and there you go. Guess what? We're rising from 40 to 42.10. Let's see if they have an analyze up here. I wonder what this is predicated off um, in terms of the exacts. We'll have to get it. If anybody knows the exact number of how this is predicated, what type of futures contracts are they using? Because as the article states, I mean, you're in an area that you could have contango. You could have backwardation. A vast majority of commodity-based mutual funds and ETS backed by futures, okay? That's because the actual physical storage of most com commodities is impractical, like with oil. That's the reason why they use futures. If they had to store all that oil, if anybody was buying that ETF, they probably would run out of place to store it. Uh, but that's where oil went a little bit haywire. While commodity futures frequently trade in contango, they can also trade in backwardation, which is when deferred month contracts trade below the front month. In this case, investors earn a positive roll yield, Many commodity futures are trading in backwardation at the moment, although Bitcoin is in contango. But there's no reason, this person says, to believe that it might not um, one day be in backwardation. It's all stuff that you got to continue to look at when you're trading some of this stuff. And that is Jared Dillian, not familiar, who was writing this Bloomberg Opinion piece. But nonetheless, if you're trading it, you better be aware. We all got a lesson, folks. Uh, hopefully, we all got a lesson earlier this year, last year. When oil traded to negative prices, you had very, very bright people trading with vast sums of money in contracts that they didn't quite understand. You, Not many people knew that it could go to negative prices. Uh, when you think about it after the fact, it does make sense, though, because what ended up happening? Negative prices made sense because nobody wanted to store the oil because they had no place to put it. So it actually made sense to pay somebody to take delivery of your crude contract. Um, remarkable. And uh, they say 49.3%. My dad's in here messaging me. All right. So Bitcoin for Bitto. 49.3% is the October futures. Not sure what the other 51% month is uh, yet. So they're going to divvy out probably to, to avoid the USO oil debacle that you had because if you remember folks there's uso the oil fund okay now that's a one minute let's put it back on a three-year weekly there's where things went haywire you went from 100 bucks down to 16. their biggest problem there was that they originally were holding all of the current month's contracts which caused them to have to roll every single month which is what caused the selling in that front month the buying in the future months and made the market go haywire stay tuned folks we'll be right back are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got all the markets in the green right now. We got Bitcoin up 1300 bucks at 63000 You got the first Bitcoin ETF trading out there. Right now, you're at 41, putting it on a minute chart to see the volatility up to 42.15, down to 41.06, kind of right where we started. Interesting to see how the day will progress for Bitcoin. First time you have an ETF trading out there. Now, it's interesting uh, that I was listening to some analysis out here. This is the last little bit, and then we're going to get to some other equities. We've got Procter & Gamble out there, their earnings today. Uh, we have Walmart moving today. But one analyst was talking about when you compare something like an ETF for Bitcoin to the futures contract for Bitcoin, it's actually identical in terms of when you buy a futures contract for Bitcoin, really all you're looking for is price exposure, okay? That's it, because there's no such thing as needing physical delivery. Not the case with many futures contracts in commodities like oil cattle, wheat, whatever you want, right? There are players in the futures contracts that are actually in there where part of the reason they're buying or selling is for the physical delivery of that commodity. Not the case with Bitcoin for a futures contract. Now, with an ETF, it's the same thing. You have people looking for price exposure. Now, commodity ETFs are people looking for price exposure but want no part of physical delivery so the point they were making was that this is an identical product to futures except for the fact not everybody has exposure to be able to buy or sell a futures contract in bitcoin right that's the difference but when it comes time to actually consider what you're gaining you're gaining price exposure on a futures contract in bitcoin you're gaining price exposure in the etf not the same as other commodities like oil for instance point being that if you have people in the ETF, you actually might be taking buying away from the futures contract, right? You might have people that were in the futures contract that now are going to trade the ETF. Therefore, the, the volume that's going to come into the ETF is not extra volume always. It's actually going to be volume that might be taken away from the futures contract and vice versa. If you go back into the futures contract, you have no reason to trade the ETF because the futures contract is just price exposure because it's not a physical commodity that cost anything to take delivery, even if you have to take delivery, if that makes any sense. Something to consider. Interesting to see where we go. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump over. We got earnings from Procter & Gamble. Let's pull up their chart. A little bit lower coming into the pre-market open, down about 1.7%. That's a one-minute chart. Let's put it back to a 15-minute so you can see the earnings this morning. We pop a little bit on the open. Now, they had strong numbers. Top estimates as price hikes help offset some costs, warns more inflation ahead. Procter & Gamble, folks, disclosure, I have some Procter & Gamble, one of my retirement accounts. Strong dividend company in here. Um, they basically have every single item that you buy at the grocery store. Or I kid, but man, they got a lot of brands that you're not even familiar with in terms of under their umbrella. They topped estimates for the fiscal first quarter earnings and revenue, raised its forecast for inflation, though, predicting that higher commodity and freight costs could hit fiscal 22 earnings by $2.3 billion, up from its prior outlook of $1.9 billion. Staggering numbers. Price hikes 
helped offset freight costs but couldn't keep up with climbing commodity costs. They make a buck 61 versus a buck 59. They take in 20.34 billion. The market was looking for 19.91. Net sales rose 5% topping expectations organic revenue which strips out the impact of acquisitions divestitures and foreign currency increased by four percent price hikes on some of png's products like pampers diapers i've been buying some pampers in the last eight months or so contributed to organic sales growth by one percent higher prices offset increased freight costs during the quarter but couldn't keep up with climbing commodity costs i mean this is a company to look to folks if you're looking for rising costs when you're talking about consumers inflation the cfo said on a call with the press that the company would raise prices on certain products within the beauty oral care grooming categories to deal with inflation however he said that the company isn't intentionally prioritizing premium products because of supply chain constraints they expect after tax commodity costs of 2.1 billion and freight costs of 200 million to weigh on fiscal 2022. Um, and let's see, healthcare was the company's top performing segment. That includes Oral B, VIX, organic sales growth of 7%, the largest segment, fabric and home care, organic sales growth of 5%. That includes Tide, Febreze, Mr. Clean, the grooming business. They got Gillette, excuse me, increased by 4%. Beauty and Baby, feminine and family care, both saw revenue rise by 2%. So strong numbers, but man, market, a little worried there. When they're talking about those billions of costs coming into 2022, you got Procter & Gamble down about 2% today. I talked about Walmart. Walmart trading higher as they got an upgrade. Let's see, who was upgrading them here? I got, uh, where did they get an upgrade from? Goldman Sachs added the retailer stock to its conviction buy list, citing the company's increasing ability to generate earnings growth. Now, disclosure, we have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks. Uh, quite a bounce here. If you're taking a look at Walmart, right, you tie it back to the low we had on July 6th, you accelerate to 153.66, you pull back to a low in March of about 126.28, and always interesting, folks, trend lines. I love trend lines. I love channels. An ode to our man, Bud Rolfs. Miss him, miss him dearly. Hope he's doing well. Um, channel lines, folks, trend lines, and Fibonacci numbers and volume. That's what I love. I mean, sometimes you see these things bounce on trend lines, right? You take it where it really accelerated back in July. You correlate it to the low we had in March. Walmart pulls back, and this is a weekly. Now I'm going to put it back on a daily for five years to see this full run on a daily basis. And look how we touch that thing. Almost to like the penny. All right, zooming in on that action. I mean, you're talking about we hit 134.71, and maybe we're within 10 or 20 cents of that price level. And since then, already from October 4th, you hit that price of 134. You're up $10 in the price of Walmart over that time. Uh, and Walmart getting an upgrade today, and they are. Listen, you, the reason why, you know, number one, fun, fundamentals on a company like Walmart. All right, number two, you have a company that has a strong dividend out there. You have a company that when you take a look at the Analyze tab, you scroll down to the market capitalization, you're only talking about a company at $400 billion market cap. And I say only because the the amount of consumers that they reach at a $400 billion market cap, they have an, an abundance of opportunity if they can turn some of those consumers into doing more business with them. I mean, that's why you hear about the stories of the Bank of Walmart, right? You hear about the stories of them thinking about getting into technology with TikTok. Didn't end up happening. But nonetheless, a strong company. You see the rebound. We're within about nine bucks of all-time highs right now. And it seems like the next stop would be the high that we had recently. You're looking at a high-volume high. That's the week of August 16th. Uh, the high there, 152.57. Walmart trading higher, though, on that news. And uh, what did they put on the price target here? Because I think they had Goldman Sachs adjust the price target. Uh, yeah, so here it is, to 196 from 184, here's the story, I pull it up in the news section of the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, Walmart has an average investment rating of outperforming among analysts by, polled by Capital IQ, with a price target ranging from 127 to 196. Goldman at the top of that range, 196, they were up it from 184. Uh, so that news driving Walmart a little bit higher today. Uh, and the market's all higher. We get a little bit of a pullback maybe on the open. S&P's right now at 44.92. The Russell barely holding on to the gains, up by three. Dow up uh, 70 points right now. And let's check back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin shares 63,440. Is that an all-time high? Did we get there? No, not quite. We got to a high of 64,000. 675 within 1000 of an all-time high. Close, close, very close. And we jump to the Bitcoin ETF, Bito. B-I-T-O, trading at 41.29.
interesting to see how that day goes. Already, already, what's that? 6.5 million shares traded. Not a bad debut for that ETF. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&Ps up 15 points, NASDAQ 100 up by 55. Some of the tech stocks, remarkable. Apple right now up 8 tenths percent. you got Microsoft shares up half a percent right now. Google shares, I want to bring this up real quick, up 6 tenths percent. And take a look at Google. We're back within that channel line. Remarkable if this is where Google heads. You're talking about only about 50 bucks away from all-time highs. We almost touched 2,600 not that long ago, October 4th, and we're trading at 28.77 right now. All right, folks, what else do we have coming up today? Coming up next is our man Basil Chapman with the Tiger Technician Tower. And at 4 o'clock today, folks, he'll be in there with subscribers to his opening call for a 90-minute webinar live with subscribers. It will be archived. If you haven't checked out the opening call, folks, maybe you have it in the past. Great time to sign back up. He'll be in there with subscribers tonight. What to prepare for into year's end and what sectors to focus on? Will there still be higher highs in 2021 and where will they be? Interesting as we come in, we're talking about, I just mentioned it at the beginning of the show, maybe 1% to 2% away from all time highs in the Dow, S&P and NASDAQ. What stocks, sectors and ETFs Basil's focusing on? What patterns and Chapman wave notations are becoming more important? Are there any buy and hold positions we are attempting? And if you have any specific questions out there, if you are a subscriber, feel free to email Basil 
feel free to email him anytime you want anyway. Basil Chapman at TFNN.com. It should be an awesome webinar. I'll be in there at 4 o'clock today for that 90-minute webinar watching Basil. I encourage you to check it out, folks. You can sign up in the time it takes for the top of the hour. Basil's coming up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. You'll be in there uh, growling and prowling, as my dad would say. All right. Checking out the markets. Russell actually sneaking into the red there on the open. Back to a 15-minute chart. You see the little bit of a sell-off on the Russell down to 22.63. Dow giving up some of the gains as well, but still in positive territory. NASDAQ is just strong, man. 15,343 right now. I pulled up some of the stocks in terms of the tech stocks. Take a look at retail, right? I talked about Walmart up 1.8%. Look at Target up nine tenths percent today. Amazon already had its run earlier in the week, down about two tenths percent. And Netflix ahead of their earnings. Giving up some of the gains, down about half a percent. We'll finish it up. The analyzed tab, $31 move priced into their equity for earnings tonight. About a 5% move in either directions after the bell. All right, folks, stay tuned. Basil's up next. Check out his webinar on the front page of TFNN. Sign up for the opening call. We got Larry at 11, Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.